Rogers. Welcome to Eco SY. Today, we're going to be walking through another Women in Industry series, and we're going to be talking about women in STEM. And I am so excited for this conversation. And to, to join me, we brought back two of the Eco SY heroes. We brought back Mary Bragoon from Rockwell Automation, Allie Donnelly from DCA Controls. I'm excited. So, welcome, Mary. Welcome, Allie. How are you all doing? Great. Excited I'm to doing be here. Great. <laughs> thankful to be here i'm sorry i think i jumped on you there mary it's all, right. all great it's all great i'm so excited myself this is i've been looking forward to this panel they're all been fun i know you two have so much energy so passionate about what you do and 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 mary maybe you can get us started when you saw this topic women in stem what got you excited about it so thanks chris uh, and thanks again for the invite to be here um i, I this is one of my passions is to really identify um, and promote the opportunity for not just women, but but maybe people of color as well that may not think that a STEM career is for them, right? Um, it is an exciting place to be. It enables you to, to use all those skills that you have, your detail-oriented, your problem-solving skills, um, and, and to be able to make an impact on the world, right? So make an impact in sustainability, make an impact in safety, make an impact in security, right? In different ways that maybe people hadn't thought about, but you know, all the modern conveniences that we have in society is because of STEM. And so I was excited um, to be able to talk a bit about it, how I got here, learn from Ali, and to be able just to continue that message and that excitement and that passion around STEM, particularly women in STEM. I love it. I love it. How about you, Ali? What got you excited? What gets me excited about women in STEM is just learning about the world around you, like being able to go out, work on the tools, build something with your hands and being able to show other women that passing along what you learn down from other women to more women. Like, I think there's just a massive road being paved right now for women in STEM. Thankfully, like people like Mary, people like you, Chris, who males who are even helping out with this, yeah. Alicia, like there's a lot of women who are really, really helping people my age get out there and I'm so thankful for it because if I didn't have LinkedIn and I didn't have you guys, I, I don't think I'd know as much as I do about STEM. No doubt. No doubt. And, and look, you are doing a phenomenal job. I mean, you know, just, <laughs> I'm just trying to keep up to you. <laughs> well, you need to set a higher bar there. I mean, cause you're, do, you're, you're crushing it. You're crushing it. And I, you're fun to watch. You're so passionate about it. I knew that uh, we were going to have some fun with you and Mary when we got on here talking about this. And, you know, as, as you think through this alley, maybe I'll come to you on the, for this particular question. Where do you see, you know, if you're, you're, you're in it right now, what's the biggest opportunity yeah. to showcase to the world, the, the wonderful things that come along with STEM? That you could run a whole factory that it doesn't matter if you're, I said this in my last podcast, you could be purple or green or male or female, right. you can do it. And there's people here who are willing to teach you. There's journeymen who are taught by journeymen who are taught by journeymen who are taught by their moms or their dads. Like, I know that it can be discouraging and sometimes it can be frustrating if you can't mm -hmm. figure it out. But if there's a will, there's a way. And it's nice to be able to step back and be like, okay, I just built this entire panel for this factory. It's going to run this entire factory. I think that a lot of people... Um, my age are just losing touch with the fact that you can work with your hands and it's okay to work hard and I don't think that they really understand that um, I notice a lot of people out in the country where I live they don't have as many opportunities as the people in the city are given whereas the people in the city they have a lot of opportunities like they have buses they have trades campuses they have all of these things here whereas in the country, there's Mennonites and they have to build their own barns. They have to do their own farming. They have to do everything with their hands. And it was really seeing a group of 25 men go on to um, a field and build a barn. I thought that was so cool. I thought it was amazing. And then my mom being in trades, she, uh, she just put in a wood stove two weeks ago. And um, she also did that probably about 10 years ago at our old house. So it was really just her. I think other women in trade sharing their stories, being able to put their voice out there and being like, look, it's fun. Come join me. <laughs> My hand's right here. I love it. I love it. How about you, Mary? What, what, what do you think here? So one of the things that really excites me, um, in addition to what Allie said, you know, it is 
you know, science, technology, engineering, math, it's a meritocracy, right? Anybody can do it. It doesn't matter if you're a male or female, what color you are. If you have, if you have uh, the desire to do it, you can do it. But one of the things that really excites me is, is the opportunity. This world is evolving so fast and the future and the technology that's being adapted, there isn't any industry sector, whether it's banking or finance or insurance or education, let alone technology that isn't touched by technology, mm -hmm. right? Even at home, everything is becoming more, more challenging or not more challenging, becoming smarter. So we have to have a fluency in technology without even, without having to learn it. We can pick it up. We can figure it out. That's really what STEM is, picking something up and figuring it out, how to make it better. And at the same time you make it better, how do you make the world better? How do you make your community better? How do you help make people better? That's what excites me about it. And the fact that, you know, um, when I first started, when I was at, when I was where Allie was, it, there weren't other women that, that I could see that did what I did. So it's really important to me to be there, to model, hey, okay, I'm not, you know, I'm not, is, I'm not in the same age group as Allie, but you could see the progression that there are people that look like me that have been there so that they can model themselves. They can see, that's why women don't go into STEM. There's nobody that looks like them. Mm. Why would I want to do this? There's nobody at the sta at the table. There's nobody at my workstation. There's nobody there that looks like me. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to be there and share the message and talk about how fun it is. Well, you, you, you both said the key word there, fun and, and, and sharing the message and, and giving that opportunity, it sounds like, you know, that's, that's just a big key to, to making this all grow forward. So, you know, you talk about Mary, how things have really changed a lot and you've seen mm -hmm. that progression. What are some of the biggest changes that you've seen? Because I know there are a lot of good programs out there. There are a lot of good ways that we're trying to engage yep. the, the next generation. I'm curious, where, where do you see as, as some of the ones that are really moving the needle? So I work at Rockwell Automation, and, and I'm also on the board of an organization called STEM Forward, which we really work with um, schools. And by the time they get to high school, it's almost too late, right? Okay. By the time you're in high school. So you really have to get students when they're little, when they're in grade school. One of the things that Rockwell does that is fantastic, but it really builds that excitement is – I think a little bit to what Allie was talking about is first, starting with the Lego leagues, you know, making it fun, making it a game, making it a competition, but sort of, but also making a real world application. So not just teaching biology or chemistry, showing how you would use it, showing how it, how you can take chemistry and build a battery and that battery enables electric vehicles and that electric vehicle helps reduce, helps improve the climate. Sort of making those real world connections that but you have to start really early. Kids grasp so early. They, mm -hmm. they pick up tablets as, as toddlers. So they already have that sort of that mindset of digital fluency before they even get start learning, before they get to formal learning. Mm -hmm. So they're curious and young. And how do we instill that ongoing curiosity um, and, and excitement to learn new things around science, technology, you know, STEM? Mm hmm. Now that STEM forward that you were mentioning, Mary. So, yeah. is, where where is that a part of again? Th that is an organization that's based here in Milwaukee. Our motto is to uh, inspire a future ready workforce. For so we we serve as a a connector between schools and corporations and employers. Like, how do we help work with schools? to build a workforce that the employers need. Okay. Um, and so then we work with schools identifying programs, um, you know, so how do we help augment that? And then we also, you know, help advise um, governments on like the state of Wisconsin on, you know, what is needed, like robotics, a grant for robotics mm -hmm. or something to that effect as well. Very cool. And for the listeners out there, we'll make sure that there's links to STEM yep. forward so they can, they can check that out, learn more about it, as well as the Lego leagues. They're definitely a lot of fun. I love the yeah, Lego leagues yeah. and just that curiosity part that you mentioned. But Allie, what's your take on this? What, what's been the biggest moves forward that you've seen? Because you've kind of walked the path, you know, here recently right. to, to get to where you're at. Yeah. And it's, it touches a lot on what Mary said. I definitely think that there's been a huge opening for women in this trade. But I do also think that we still have a long way to go because I'm the only one that walks into the classroom and I'm the only girl in that classroom out of 35 other guys, or I walk into a factory like I'm working at today and I'm the only female there. And sometimes it's difficult, but 
when I have people like Mary Mm -hmm. or people Mm -hmm. like Alicia or other girls that I can reach out to that I know are there to support me and be there for me, it makes it so much easier because Mm -hmm. she's been there too. She knows exactly how I feel. She knows the feeling of anxiety and, oh my gosh, can I do this? Yes, I can. Yes, I can do this. But I think the biggest thing is there needs to be more trade shows and it needs to be something that's compulsory for grade schools and high schools. I don't think it should be optional because kids are going to wake up in the morning and be like, well, I don't want to go to that. And you know what? If my mom didn't get me out of bed and take me to a trade show and had me change tires, had me solder, had me weld, I probably would have never gotten into trades. And I'm really, really thankful that there are little things like that or podcasts like this, like where we're able to speak about how it is in the industry what needs to be better like I think it's pretty cool that everything is kind of turning into I'd say maybe AI a lot of things are being dependent on phones a lot of Mm -hmm. things are being dependent on robots and my generation thankfully and a lot of your kids are growing up alongside this so I think that there's Mm -hmm. still a long way to go but it's also been a lot of fun now, you both mentioned the importance of the grade school, you know, because a lot of times when, when I was thinking about it, about this topic, you know, a while back, I naturally in my mind went to high school. I don't know why I did that. I just just naturally went to, the you know, sophomore, juniors, seniors and trying to get them to figure out maybe because I was trying to associate it with trade schools. But curious, you know, what the, the grade school concept and, the, and that effort. What can we be doing to double down on that? I mean, because that sounds like that's really important to both of you. Yeah, uh, that kind of touches on what I said, um, I guess, a little bit before. Like the, the school that I went to in the country, I graduated with 110 kids, whereas the students here, they graduate with maybe 2,000. They don't know the kids they're graduating with. So I was someone in school who thought that I was going to take law. I had no interest in trades because we didn't have anybody coming to speak to us. We had a welding shop and this and that, but I was like, oh, well, that's that's a guy's, why would I want to do that? And if I just had someone who was like, girls can do this too, and you can actually do an even better job sometimes, so come on over here. Like, I just wish that there was more women who want women in trades in high schools. A lot of the high school teachers are men, which makes it sometimes hard for girls to approach, I find, because no to knock anybody but the older age group I find still has some of the mindset that women don't deserve to be in this trade and I think that everybody deserves a spot here especially women and like you said if you get it out there in public school you have like a woman who's like hey I'm an engineer I work in the oil rigs this is kind of what I do this is what you could do one day like I think it's just so fascinating it's just we need people out there to speak and to speak to students that aren't necessarily men what's your what's your take mary on on the the importance of that grade school area i you know i think by the time uh i I agree with ali with everything she says and i and i also think that by the time they get to high school they haven't had the foundation if they're just thinking about in high school you haven't laid that foundation Mm -hmm. you know they don't see they don't see the possibility there there are courses that you need to take there are clubs that you can join there are activities uh, whether it's Lego League, First Robotics, you know, the Science Club, you know, coding camps, I, you know, all those things are things that you, by the time you get to high school, it's too late. I don't want to say it's too late. It's harder. It's much harder, right? But if you start building that excitement, then it just makes it that much easier as they progress all the way through and they see the possibility. You know, by the time you get to high school, maybe the possibilities are a lot more narrow. Right. 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 But for example, I have a a nephew who is um, he is in I guess he's a sophomore in high school now, but he's decided that he wants to be an electrician. And so in high school, so he's done a lot of math and science all the way through, but he goes to half the time, he goes into a a regular classroom, and then the other half is through a trade school, right? So by the time he completes it and, and starts his apprenticeship, he'll have no college debt, right? Because they'll pay for him. Most places will pay for him to continue his education. Um, But he'll be, and he'll work towards getting that journeyman license, which an employer will pay for. There's a lot of value, but to start early like that, Mm -hmm. to understand and have somebody that mentors you and coaches you, um, to start as early as possible and to make it fun so that they see how fun it really is, as, as opposed to, oh, I'm taking math. What's the point of math? 
I love that. <laughs> and I think we need to also celebrate like that story needs to be celebrated at the high school just as much as someone getting a scholarship to uh, a yeah. you know, four year anniversary. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that, that needs to be that big a deal. Uh, and I think we got to change the narrative on some of that. And you both have said fun a couple of times. And I think that because as you know, I have a 11, nine and a three, three, month old so you know how you engage those those that 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 age range is a lot different but mm -hmm. you know when i think about like my my 11 and my nine-year-old and you know mary you probably remember jay flores when he was working with yeah. with rockwell and the things he did with yeah. this not magic it's science those yeah, types of things exactly. are just really fun you know and there's so many cool companies out there now that are making these stem um center type toys and little kits yeah. and things. So I think just embracing that, let, let your kids be curious and, and, and embrace yeah. that curiosity is something that I think we could do as, as parents, particularly for, for, you know, of little girls to let them play with these types of things and, and figure it out on their own. And Allie, I see you're, you're about to, you're, you're so excited on this one. So what are your thoughts? I just, I love that. I love that you want to get your little girls out. And I love that, like, you're someone who is speaking to women and supporting women in this trade. So if they come to you one day, hey, dad, I want to be a heavy machine operator. You could be like, well, I know this person, this person, and this person. Let's get it started. Like, I think that that's just amazing. And I think that there's still a huge spotlight on the fact that if you're in trades, you're less than. But we are the people that are running this world. We are the people that have this world functioning. Like if a factory goes out, you're calling in an electrician. If something goes wrong in the machine, you're calling in a mechanical engineer. Like as much as people want to knock trades people, we work extremely, extremely hard. And I think that more programs need to be offered in the country. Like there's a lot of kids out there, like I said, Mennonites who worked so, so hard. And I didn't even know, Mary, that there was a program like that for your nephew. Like things like that. I'm 24 and I need, I still need my 9,000 hours. So I'm not going to be licensed until I'm almost 27. I had to go through the schooling. But if I had someone who would open me up to this a little bit sooner, because my mom tried, I wasn't interested at first. But if I had someone who opened it up to me a little bit sooner, I think that it would have been amazing. Like he's getting his trades hours. He's going to be a journeyman and a red seal by the time he's my age. Like he is just amazing. And I think that he needs to share his story. Like Chris said, like there's so many kids out there who think that what they're doing is just nonchalant and not a big deal. He's awesome. <laughs> he needs to get his whole group of friends doing that because there's a huge, huge gap of people that are nobody retiring mm -hmm. right. and nobody to fill right. that. I'm, I am curious, Allie. So that was a, a program that Mary has, you know, very passionate about. It's in, I think you said Wisconsin, right? Mary is where that's based yep. out of. Yep. Yep. In, mm -hmm. in Canada, where you're at, Allie, what, what are some of the programs? Just what, what, what are the options? You mentioned the trade shows. Is that traditionally where it's found? Absolutely. I would say a uh, trade show. So my mom, she worked for Ontario Power Generation. So thankfully, um, it's a bit, pretty big corporation. We did a lot of parades. We did a lot of like just handing out candy and pamphlets. And then the older I got, she started taking me to Skills Ontario, which DeWalt and Milwaukee and every single college and university you could think of comes and they set up little kiosks and they hand you all the information and I think it shows like that because my mom, um, she took me to speak for women in trades. So I was speaking to try and get young girls into trades. Meanwhile, I was actually convincing myself. So the fact that I get to go back there five years later and tell all these girls like, hey, I used to sit where you were and think nothing of it. And now I'm an apprentice electrician and I have the world in my hands. And it is such a good feeling. Like I've met the most incredible people. I get to go on yeah. the tools. I get to wire up a whole panel that's going to help someone for the rest of their life. <laughs> and you know what? Right. If it doesn't, then I get to come back and fix it. And that's okay. So I just think that there's a lot of opportunities out there. And with COVID, it's really, really hard because you mm -hmm. can't even attend campus mm -hmm. as a student if you aren't vaccinated. 
Yeah, it's true. It's true. But there are, but I think Ali, you know, I think what you said is like, you need to go where the people are, right? So, so where are, you know, where are the kids, right? Are they on Twitch? Are they on TikTok? Are, um, are they on YouTube? You know, how as a parent or how as, how do we direct them? Like how are, how is stuff made? You know, all these cooking competitions, it's really all about science. It's all about measuring. It's about math. It's about heating it's about cooling that's science right i mean like making everything about like help, helping people see like oh that couldn't have happened if this didn't happen but you know i think about how does how does the military recruit people they go to where people are you know they make they do ads they make movies they're on you know they're on the right social media we should be doing the same thing making it fun making it exciting going out on social media where are the kids now you know right with covid we couldn't go to schools but i think i just saw recently that some of the schools are now able to take tours so some of the the junior highs are able to take some field trips where they're taking women like to tour our power plant here right they're talking to other women or they're or they're going to the water treatment plant or they're going to one of the other manufacturing facilities like harley and and you know and seeing that kind of fun stuff but it is it has to also be really focused right yeah. because sometimes the dynamic dynamic when you have you know a girl uh, girls and boys together the dynamic might shift mm -hmm. and girls might might feel uh, not as confident I, I would hope that's not the case but sometimes it is the reality of it right mm -hmm. yeah that's so true and i think the biggest thing the two social media platforms that i know that kids are huge on are facebook and tiktok like if we could just put 30 minute snippets like just tips point form quickly like wiring up a terminal a, a race yeah. between a push in terminal and a yeah. screw in terminal like make it fun make it like educational but also quick because i'm oh, yeah. someone who i'll lose I'll, i have the attention span of a squirrel so i'll lose focus after probably two minutes of a video but no i think that's a great idea is just projecting it more on kids and since like you said we can't be in person doing these things, walking them through as much. Right. Yeah, then we right. can at least reach out that's to right. them online because that's I, where they are. And I think the factories, like you mentioned, <laughs> Harley, you know, I, I, that, they need to do more stuff. You know, the fun stuff, not, not all manufacturing is cool, but you know, no. if you got a, if you got <laughs> yeah. a motorcycle coming out on the back end, yeah. that's going to grab some attention. Right. And then exactly. I, I talked to a lady and, and she took her boys to like the Louisville slugger um, factory to see baseball yeah. basket and made things like that. And, so, I mean, I just think being really intentional about that kind of stuff. Now, and I am curious on something. You both are technical and you're, you're yeah. very smart. You know, you've, 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 you've come a long way. There may be some moms out there that get this and listen, and we hope we, we get this in front of them. And they're not, you know, STEM was a weak point for them. Mm -hmm. Give them some encouragement. How can, what, what can they do, even though STEM was maybe not their strong suit, to yeah. to really support that in their kids and the next generation. So, in, any thoughts there? And, and Mary, you you want to lead off? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'm happy to do it. So, um, I came from a family, and like my, my my father was a, a homicide detective, um, and so he didn't have you know he he has no technical background, right. so to speak, like in STEM. Um, he had a cool job, but yeah, he no <laughs> but he he wasn't um, you know. And so my background wasn't. But when I was in school, I had some mentors. So my dad encouraged me he supported me he um allowed me to explore it he didn't try to drive me but he also recognized that he couldn't do it and so i found mm. some i found some mentors that that i could go to and that supported that i could ask questions with that i could so having you know so parents whether it's a mother or a father you know your par the parents if you don't have you don't have to have a stem background but support your support the curiosity in your kids and then and then know where to go to ask for help right sure i love it i love it ally any thoughts on that Absolutely, because even if your parents aren't someone in STEM, they have a friend who's a plumber, they have a friend who knows someone who knows someone who knows someone, like everyone is in trades. And it's pretty easy to find once you look for it, honestly. And I'm, I was the same way, like my dad wasn't so much the technical side of things, but I was lucky in the sense that my mom was a power engineer and a nuclear operator. So even then, when she was gone on her 12 hour shifts, like out, at the coal plant and stuff, my brother was at home and he's a welder fitter mechanic millwright. He's like, Al, 
we're building mama stock car. Let's do this. Let's weld this. Let's get it together. And if we weren't building a stock car, we were building motorcycles. So I think that there's always someone out there who wants to fix their own car, who wants to do their own thing. And you know what? They're going to get YouTube and Google to fix it. And those are the people that you really want to talk to because they'll take you under your wing and be like, hey, I just fixed my car. You want to fix yours? (laughs) Right. Yeah, That's exactly. right. There's a there's a neighbor, there's an uncle, there's a cousin, there's somebody at school, there's somebody from church, wherever, right? The right. world is and the world is full of people that want to help. And I yeah. think too, give yourself some grace. So if you're if you're a parent yes. and you're not you're not very really strong yeah. in STEM, like it's okay. You don't have to have it all figured yeah, out. Exactly. And we're, in, we're in a connected world. I think the biggest mess, my biggest message that I hope to get across mm-hmm. to to parents out there who are not who don't have that proficiency is you just want your kids to be curious and you want to yeah. have an environment where it's okay for that curiosity to shine, you know, and, and to make yeah. some mistakes. Yeah. And, and if, when all else fails, I, I always uh, say G to G go to Google, right? I mean, <laughs> we can figure out a lot, you know, just with like when, yeah. when, when I was doing some of Jay's experiments, I didn't exactly understand them. So on, on a couple of things, I just, you know, Google on the side and then, oh yeah, this is what he's trying to do. You, know, <laughs> you can really, you can come off yeah. as a genius if, just with the, maybe a quick trip to the restroom with, with, uh, with a Google. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a university of, of life, right? And, right. I, and I think also the thing that the curiosity as a parent and then to help them see the possibility, right? Right. Right. The possibility that can be, don't limit yourself. Um, you know, if I followed in sort of my parents' footprint, I might not have, I, you know, I, my world would have been different. It would have been smaller, mm-hmm. right? I wouldn't have, mm-hmm. in my roles, I've had the opportunity. I've got to travel globally. I've got to meet people and work with people all over the world and collaborate with teammates from all over the world. So I think about, you know, the possibility, um, you know, who would have, I wouldn't have ever thought when I started my, when I started going to school that I would have had these experiences, but because I did and because of STEM, you know, my world is fuller and broader. Um, and it's not just because of STEM, it's because of the, I kept myself open to the possibility of what could be. And I didn't, you know, and that's where, it, and I think that's a, a larger thing around, you know, the opportunities that STEM presents with careers, um, you know, with innovation, with being curious, with relationships you build because of your interests. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I am curious. You're both so active and so, so much advocates for Sims for STEM. I'm so, excuse me. What are you doing to be proactive? Like, how are you staying on the front lines of really moving yeah. the ball down the field from a STEM standpoint? And Allie, you want to lead us off here? Sure. I'd say the biggest thing in trades is to support others and they'll support you. Like you just, you have to get your name out there, but you have to do it in a polite way because there's a lot of people who market on um, LinkedIn and not the best way. Uh, and then there's other people like Will and Jake who post these amazing videos who like you can go and watch and like you, Chris, like you post so many amazing videos. So I think it's just knowing someone like, and yeah, it's, it's, you're going to make mistakes in STEM and that's where you're yeah. really going to learn. And it's people like Chris and Mary that you can go to for insightfulness and Hey, I kind of messed up. What can I do better next time? And you're always going to have advice and you're always going to right. have help. And I think the biggest thing is, it's okay to ask for help. STEM is extremely difficult. Like it's not easy. Sometimes it's not easy, but it's it's fun and it's worth it and it's powerful and it runs the world. So I think that the best thing to do is market for the companies that you support the most and support the companies that are local to you. Support the companies that you really have good relationships with and stuff like that, because it comes back. All of these things come back to you. And if you're not helping them out, they're helping you out, which I think is pretty neat. No doubt. No doubt. How about you, Mary? Any, any thoughts on that proactive approach? So for me, two things like I, you know, I, like I said, I, I make sure that when people ask me to tell my story or to speak, I say yes. Right. I always say yes. That's right. my, I always say yes. But the, the other thing I want to do is be proactive is to stay, uh, to, to keep learning, like what new technology is Rockwell developing or what new technology or, or trends that are impacting uh, the world that we could develop technology that can make an 
that, that could help address it. So energy efficiency, mm -hmm. uh, workforce skills gap, you know, what, you know, how do we help people, you know, interface with robots? You know, what do, how do we uh, deploy AI as part of our technology to help plants run better or more safely or more securely? So how do I keep learning so that I can keep um, also keep communicating to others about don't be afraid of all this. It's right. it's a brave new future. So part of it is you know being able to, to meet and have I have a chance to talk to you and meet with you, but then also keep learning so that I can come back and still keep sharing the message um, as well. That's right. That's right. I love it. I love it. Well, well, some great topics we covered there. Now let's yeah. let's have some fun. You you both are used to the lightning round on Eco Ask Why. I'm going to custom tailor this lightning round to be, to, to be on this topic. So Mary, you can kick us off. What's your, what's your favorite STEM program? Um, my favorite STEM program, I think first robotics. First I love robotics. that it's a game. Yeah. First robotics. I love that it's a game. I love that everybody, I think everybody's so creative. They have costumes, they have names of their teams and it is really diverse. I love it. Nice. Love it. Love it. And we'll make sure that link is in the show notes for our listeners too, to yeah. check that first robotics out. How about you, Allie? As someone who's just coming into STEM, um, I, I'm actually completely open to any resources that you both have. Cause that's something that I'm still working on. Um, being six months in the field is just kind of trying to see what's out there. Um, and what is for me and what is for others. So I'm open to anything, honestly. I'm sorry that I didn't have anything picked out. <laughs> I definitely um, say that Kick-Ass Careers and Skills Ontario are two major, major companies in Ontario that want people in trades. And they they show every single university and college that there is to offer for these trades programs. So I think that those are two really, really big companies that are helping STEM. Sweet, sweet. We'll make sure we put those in the show notes too. Now, Allie, you got a lot of STEM experience. What's the coolest project you got? The coolest project that I have? Honestly, that's, there's so many. That's such a hard choice. Um, I would have to say the next set of panels is what I'm most excited about. So it's going to be um, a set of panels that are running a sugar factory, a sugar refinery um, processing system. So it takes the sugar into one and then I'm, I'm pretty sure it like kind of breaks it all down. And then basically the sugar starts out white and it ends out black into a liquid and I get to build the panel and then I get to send it to California. So it's not just going to Ontario or somewhere else. Like I get to actually see it out in the field in California. And a lot of the time, um, because of things like LinkedIn, uh, I'll post my work or people from California will reach out and be like, hey, are you the one that built this panel? Because this is it in the field. And they'll send me a picture of my work and be like, it, it worked great. So I think that that's a really, really amazing feeling in trades is that everyone wants to support you. I love it. I love it. How about you, Mary? Gosh, there's so many, um, you know, there's, you know, there's always the next, what is the next one? So, mm -hmm. um, I know what, are, what are some of the cool things I used to work for a company and we used to build, um, like 5,000 horsepower motors, 10,000 horsepower motors. That was cool because those, those, you know, ran big compressors, they ran big mills that went into mining equipment. So all of the heavy industries, I think that is really cool. You know, Rockwell does a lot um, with, in the space program. So I think that is really cool. Oh, like yeah. we really help put people in space. So I think, <laughs> you know, all of that is really cool. Um, I didn't know we had that red thread, Mary. I used to, we used to at Eco work on those big 5,000 horsepower motors. So oh, I, you did? Yeah. yeah. Big synchronous machines. And I mean, that, yes, that stuff yes. is really awesome. Yeah. yeah. Small world. Very cool. Very cool. It is. It is. It is. Now, how about you, Mary? The last lightning uh, round yep. question, most inspirational STEM advocate, like who, who jumps out to, in your mind when you think about that? Oh my gosh. STEM advocate. You know, I think this is going to sound really serious and it won't, but it's personal to me. Okay. So when I, when I went to high school, um, um, I went to an all-girl high school, and it was a it was it was it was a Catholic school, and and it was it was a Sister Elaine. Sister Elaine was my science teacher, and she she helped inspire me and really ignite that excitement that inspired me to continue on. So for me personally, there are so many people at a larger, like globally, right? There's Steve Jobs. Right. There's there's so many people, but for me personally, this woman. Um, you know, who just inspired me to go on 
and to be where yeah. I am today and to talk to you. Oh, I see. Those are the answers that I love because I mean that you, that that that's the, the the connection we're looking for. Yeah. So wonderful. Thank you for that. How about how about yeah. Allie? Who, who do you have? Honestly, I would have to I have to give hats off to my mom and Alicia Gilpin. She has just completely been amazing to me and I think it's even cooler that she just started her own company and she's helped reach me out to people like Tim Wilborn like I have one of his process meters at home now and that's something that I can go and work with and I just think that there's such a beautiful connection and it's just getting bigger and bigger with opportunities like these and these podcasts and these shows so definitely hats off to my mom and Alicia they are incredible and if you haven't met them yet you should (laughs) For sure, for sure, absolutely. This has been a lot of fun. We've 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 talked about women in STEM, two heroes here helping me walk walk through this conversation. And you know, we, Eco asked why we wrap up with the why. So you know, what would be your why around this topic? I'll jump in, Allie. Why? Because I want to see more women at the table <laughs> making a dis- making decisions making an impact, continuing to make impact, but making decisions on projects, on technology evolution, on, we already know that women change people's lives every day, every day, but at a bigger scale, because we, we are, you know, women are capable, they're smart, there is no reason they should be at the table. And so I want to be here to represent and to encourage other women to step up and help me and help Allie. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I would just say that it's, it's, not always going to be easy that every day isn't going to be perfect but there's people like mary who are willing to help there is and it's okay to take a step back i feel like a lot of the times i go into a job thinking this needs to get done oh my god this needs to get done now but it's okay to take a step back and it's okay to do what you need to do to get the job done honestly i think the biggest why for me is um why are women still not equal and what can we do to fix that yeah. Right. So, yeah. And I would like to say that I want to thank, you know, I want to thank Eco. I want to thank Chris for being an ally. You know, this isn't a women's problem, right? This is not a women's problem. This is our problem. This is everybody's right. problem. This is everybody's issue. You're making a difference in your children. You're going to change. You're already changing the world by with your kids and inspiring that curiosity. This is not only a women issue. This right. is a world issue. So I want to thank you for the opportunity and for being an ally and a champion for this as well. Oh, the, the pleasure is all mine. I'm humbled just to be able to have this conversation with wonderful, wonderful people like you. This is exciting for me to be able to give you a platform to share a message like this. And you never know we who we're going to inspire. You know, these videos are all over. They're live all the time. So it may be, we're maybe inspiring somebody five years from now, you know, but, yeah. uh, you know, these conversations are important and I can't thank you both enough for taking the time. If you're listening, check out the show notes. You'll be able to connect with Mary, connect with Allie, see the awesome things that they're building. So you'll have their links right there. And then everything we talked about, is going to be there as well. So Mary, Allie, thank you so much again for taking the time with us today. Yeah. Thank you, Allie. It was great to see you. Thank you. It's truly an honor. It was so nice. I, goodbye from Ontario and sending lots of love. <laughs> yeah, goodbye from Milwaukee. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Thank you both. Thank you. All right. Wow. That was a fun conversation with Mary and Allie. They brought so much insight, so much wisdom. You know, what they were talking about, staying curious, always saying yes. You know, just the, the way that they pointed to so many good resources for STEM big impact. Make sure you check out the show notes because there was so much to unpack there that you'll want to make sure you get to those resources. Now, the war stories, keep them coming. They're the fun stuff that we like to celebrate. We like to hear about the cool stuff that's happening out in industry because we want to put a spotlight on it. So hit up the links in the show notes for that. If you're liking Eco SY, give us a five-star rating, write a review. It really makes an impact. And most importantly, share it with someone because what we're building, it can only reach the people that we share it with. So we need, if you're getting value, share it with someone else because that really makes an impact. And remember to keep asking why.